Okay, so in this video we're going to start talking about the second derivative test. Uh, and this is, roughly speaking, just an alternative to the first derivative test. Um, and we'll talk in more detail about that. Um, but anyway, uh, in this video we're going to talk about what the second derivative test is and uh, just sort of give a general overview of why it works. Uh, not really a formal rigorous proof or anything, that's a little bit beyond the scope of what we want to do. Um, we'll just talk about why it works uh, geometrically. and. Um, then we'll do some brief and simple examples that sort of illustrate all the possibilities. Uh, then in the next few videos we'll do some more complicated examples, uh, which are actually going to be the same ones we looked at for the first derivative test. Uh, and then after that we'll talk about when we want to use this versus the first derivative test. So for now let's just talk about what this is and why it works, and then some simple examples. So uh, second derivative test says if x equals c is a critical point of f of x, and if f prime of c and f double prime of c both exist, then uh, we have a few cases to look at. So before we look at these cases down here, um, let's just make sure we understand this. So x equals c is a critical point of f of x, so uh, that means um, you know, we have this function f of x and there's a critical point at this value x equals c, and we also have the restriction that uh, the first and the second derivative both exist at this value x equals c. Okay? So we got a critical point and the first and second derivative both exist at this place where we have a critical point. Okay? Uh, now let's look at these cases here. So what we want to do is pretty much just look at the second derivative. If the second derivative at x equals c is positive, then f of x has a local min at x equals c. Okay, so if f double prime to c is positive, um, then f of x has a local min at x equals c. The other case says uh, if f double prime to c is negative, then f of x has a local max at x equals c. And the third case, uh, and unfortunately here, uh, it says if f double prime to c is exactly zero, then uh, we have to try something else. And what that means is, uh, in other words, if f double prime to c is zero, then f of x might have a local min here, it might have a local max, or it might have neither. Okay, uh, we just don't know which one it is, uh, and there's really no other way to tell using the second derivative test, so that's why we have to try something else. Uh, and a good thing to try would be the first derivative test, but we'll, uh, we'll talk about that when we get to more complicated examples. But um, so let's talk about why this works, and then we'll see some simple examples uh, illustrating all these possibilities here. Okay. So um, we have these three cases here, but before we talk about these cases, let's go back up here and sort of dissect this. So um, two main parts here. We have a critical point, and then we also have the restriction that the first and second derivative both exist. So let's uh, look at this first part here. Um, if x equals c is a critical point of f of x, so what does that mean? So let's just review. Um, if x equals c is a critical point of f of x, what does that mean? Uh, remember, just by definition of a critical point, that means f prime of c equals zero, or f prime of c just doesn't exist, right? DNE does not exist. Okay. So um, just by definition of a critical point, uh, if f of x has a critical point at x equals c, then just straight up by the definition, f prime of c is zero, or f prime of c does not exist. Okay. But now let's look at the second piece here. Uh, when we do the second derivative test, we also have this restriction that f prime to c and f double prime to c both must exist. Okay. Now if we have a restriction that f prime to c has to exist, then we just can't have this case when we do the second derivative test, right? So x equals c is a critical point of f of x, that gives us this or this, but this other restriction for the second derivative test uh, tells us we can't have this, because okay? f prime to c has to exist. Right? So if x equals c is a critical point of f of x, then we have this and this, but we also have the restriction that f prime of c must exist, so we just can't have this. Um, that's just how the second derivative test works, that's just how it's set up. Um, you know, that's, it's more or less just a definition of that test. So, um, okay, x equals c is a critical point, and f prime of c must exist, so this is the only possibility, really. Okay, um, and we also have to have the uh, f double prime to c must also exist, because if f double prime to c doesn't exist, then it just doesn't even make sense to talk about this, uh, or this, or this, right? So that's why we have this other restriction here, f double prime to c must also exist. Okay, so that's sort of dissecting this part up here. Um, so f prime to c equals zero is the main point here. When you do the second derivative test, what you want to keep in mind, uh, just sort of in the back of your mind, I guess, is that uh, you know that f prime to c must be zero because it's you have a critical point at x equals c and the first derivative exists, so this is your only possibility. Okay, so let's talk about these cases now. Um, now remember in the last few videos we talked about concavity in the second derivative 
and uh, we mostly talked about concavity on an interval, but uh, there's a similar concept of concavity just at a single point. So remember for uh, concavity on an interval, if you have a positive second derivative, then that corresponds to a function that's concave up. Well, it's pretty much the same thing when you talk about concavity at a point. Okay? So if f double prime to c is greater than zero, then that means uh, the original function f of x is concave up uh, at this point x equals c. Okay? So what does it mean to be concave up? Well, uh, let's just draw a picture of that real quick. So that's just something like this, right? So concave up would be something like that. Okay? Just like that nice little bowl shape there. Something like y equals x squared or x to the fourth or something like that. Um, let's put some axes on this because we're going to do something with that soon. So this will be x and y. Okay, so, um, and then c, we'll put c right here. Why do we want to put c right there? Well, because we also know that f prime to c is zero. Okay? And if f prime to c is zero, what does that mean geometrically? Well, that means we have a tangent line. Okay? So our tangent line is going to be right about here, or exactly right there at that little bottom part. So a uh, horizontal tangent line, okay, f prime to c equals zero means we have a horizontal tangent line, tangent line with slope zero. Um, so what we have here is a horizontal tangent line on a function that's concave up at this point. So uh, generally speaking, um, if you have this case here, this is what your function is going to look like around this point x equals c. Now it might be doing something totally different, completely crazy if you get away from x equals c, but when you're right here, right up near x equals c, your function just sort of kind of looks like this. And that's all we care about, right? Because we're talking about local mins, local maxes, so we only care what's happening locally. Okay? So whatever's happening way over here or way over here, we just don't care about. Uh, we only care about what's happening right up near x equals c. And um, in this case, what's happening right up near x equals c is something like this. Okay? So uh, just to recap real quick, um, f prime to c equals zero means we have a horizontal tangent line at the value x equals c, all right? And uh, this is our function y equals f of x here. And f double prime of c is greater than zero means the function is concave up near, uh, at and near x equals c. So basically, horizontal tangent line, concave up function, then what we have right here is a local min, right? So we see that's a local min, all right? Now, um, your function isn't always going to look exactly like this, right? It might, like, uh, like we already said, it might be doing something completely crazy way out here. But again, we're talking about local mins, local maxes. We only care what happens locally right up near the point. Um, so that's why, that's sort of why this works here. Because uh, this is just telling us what's happening locally near the point. We know that there's a horizontal tangent line at the point, And this tells us that at the point and near the point, um, the function is concave up. So again, uh, just to recap real quick, or to summarize it all, horizontal tangent line, concave up function, that means you got a local min. Okay. So let's look at the second case here. Uh, it's pretty similar. Um, let's make our little axes here. Oh, and I want to point out, I'm drawing everything in the first quadrant, but that's just sort of, uh, that's because it's just kind of the standard thing to do. Um, but, you know, the fact that this is in the first quadrant doesn't matter at all. It could be in the second, third, or fourth quadrant. Uh, it makes no difference. The only thing that matters is horizontal tangent line, concave up function for this case. Now for this case, uh, the only thing that's different is now f double prime to c is negative. Okay? So if we want to draw a similar kind of picture here, uh, let's go ahead and do that. So f double prime to c is less than zero. Remember uh, back from our discussion on concavity, if you have a negative second derivative, that corresponds to a concave down function. So that would be something like this. And uh, f prime to c equals zero means horizontal tangent line. So where would the horizontal tangent line here be? Uh, it would be right here at that little peak. Which would sort of be like, if this were a parabola, that would be the vertex, but you know, this isn't necessarily just a parabola. Um, but that's sort of irrelevant. Okay, so uh, horizontal tangent line Okay, which we know must be the case. When we do the second derivative test, we know that has to be the case, horizontal tangent line and a concave down function. So that's what gives us our local max here. And again, just like in the other case, the function won't look exactly like this. You know, it might be in a different quadrant. It might be shifted somewhere else. It might be squished in, stretched out. Uh, it'll probably be doing something crazy farther out. But again, we're talking about local, local max or local min, local whatever. So um, we only care what's happening locally. And again, um, f double prime to c equals zero means at this point x equals c, 
we have a horizontal tangent line. So that's what's happening at x equals c, a horizontal tangent line. And this f double prime to c is negative means the function is concave down at and near x equals c. So horizontal tangent line, concave down function is going to basically uh, force you to have a local max right here. Okay. So um, that's that case. Now the third case is a little more complicated. Now what's unfortunate about this, uh, if f double prime to c equals zero, uh, what's unfortunate is you might still have this. You might still have this. Okay. Um, or you might have something else completely, you know, different. Uh, let's draw a picture of what, you know, what a different case could be. So uh, no room down here, so let's come up here. So we'll put an axis up here. Okay, so x-axis, y-axis. So we could have something that's sort of like a cubic function. It, it might not be cubic exactly, but it might have that cubic shape to it. So it could be something like this. Uh, so let's say this is a y equals f of x. Uh, I don't think I labeled this one, just to be thorough. Okay, y equals f of x. Um, and then, you know, we're still dealing with the second derivative test here, so we still know that f prime to c must be zero. So that's going to happen here. Uh, right around this point here, there's going to be a horizontal tangent line. And again, in this video, we're going to do some simple uh, actual examples so that this will hopefully make just a little more sense. Uh, at least. Okay, so if f double prime to c equals zero, uh, again, you might have this case, and we'll see an example of that. You might have this case, we'll see an example of that also, or you might have this case, and we'll see an example of that also uh, in this video. So that's what's unfortunate about f double prime to c equals zero. You might have a local min, you might have a local max, or you might have neither. Okay. But uh, what is nice about this is if f double prime to c is positive, then this is your only possibility. You have to have a local min here. If f double prime to c is negative, then you have to have the local max for the reasons we talked about. Uh, it's your only possibility. But again, if f double prime to c is zero, then you just don't know what's happening. It could be this, could be that, could be that. So it could be a min, a max, or neither. All right, so um, that's sort of a, a geometric explanation of how this uh, test works. So let's see some examples. 